order to achieve that accuracy, you need to get a correction signal from some source. One option would be your own base station. Later on in this video, I'm going to go through the MLED base station, which you can also purchase from Egra GPS. That's a one-time cost, and you can use it for the entire fleet on your farm. A quick demonstration to help illustrate is a tractor here. You have your CRG on your tractor, and that's connecting to satellites. In this situation, you have a low accuracy and no RTK. In this situation, we have RTK and high accuracy. So our base station, that can be your own base station like the MLET or a third-party source, that connects the internet to the Entrip caster, which connects to your CRG. In this slide, you can see we have a modem in our CRG. You can also do it over Bluetooth with your phone. However, I do recommend going with the modem. In any brand of machine, you would have this on the roof or inside of the roof, and you would have a John Deere display in the cab, which the steering is done over. So on the Fend tractor, we will be installing it under here, so it's actually already installed. On a John Deere, you would have it on your standard John Deere mount. The CRG will fit right on that on the roof. So here's the CRG, very easily mounted. You would literally just mount it in there with four of these screws. To get RTK, you need to get RTC and corrections from a source that can be a third party source or you can have your own base station. If you do purchase a base station, which for me, for my farm, made the most sense. Um, I run the CRG on all of my machines. I have multiple machines going at a time. I only need one base station on the farm and it's a one time cost and then I'm good. But if you did purchase the MLED, this is the box it comes in. Away, it gives you some instructions on how to set up your MLED. On the website agrogps.com you'll find the products, so you'll find the MLED, you'll find the CRG, and under those will be an installation guide on how to do basically the base station here. So I printed out a couple pages just to basically go along with you guys on how to set it up. Do it one time and then it's done. Here is the CRG on the product page and if we scroll down you find more information about it. Here's another video and the documentation installation. This is what you want to look at here. So if you look at the base station setup, it's right here. So the emlet, our base station, is installed on the top of our workshop. It is a very stable structure. Some people, you know, might think to put on the top of your elevator, like the grain elevators that we have here too. And those have a great like vantage point, but those elevators move quite a bit. So that's definitely not the best option. Put it on a stable, stable structure like a shop. But it also has to have that unobstructed view of the sky in all directions. So the three things that that MLED needs is needs that unobstructed view of the sky in all directions on a stable structure. It needs Wi-Fi and it needs constant power source. As it says on that box, as well as on this installation manual, is that there is that Reach View 3 app, and that's on your smartphone, so you can just install that, and that's how you set up your MLED. So here's that Reach View app, and then we can just install that. The LED on our MLET RS2 is now blue, so we can continue to configure it. 
You can do this either on the app or you can switch to your computer, which is what I've done here. The RS2 Mlet is given an IP address in your network. So once that RS2 is blue, you can type in that IP address in your browser here. Just click enter and automatically this website comes up for Mlet. Or you can continue configuring it in the Reach View app. Ideally, a base station should be surveyed in so that the latitude and longitude, which is a reference for everything, is correct. If you ever in the future switch to another service, which is also surveyed in, all your boundaries and everything will be correct because it is also coming from a surveyed latitude and longitude. If you only run an average latitude longitude, which is not 100% correct, but it is still good, then as long as you stay with that reference station, you'll have the exact same accuracy as if you would survey it in. Getting that average latitude longitude is not wrong. You'll get great accuracy just like if you would survey it in. It only becomes a problem when you, for a certain time, maybe have to rely on a third party source and that one is surveyed in. So everything that you have from your average latitude longitude might shift to that surveyed in latitude longitude. So all your boundaries would shift. To get that very accurate latitude longitude, you have a couple options. So you can survey it in, or if you have access to a local RTCM correction service, so at that third party source, even if it's just for a short period of time, you can use that to set your base station's position very accurately. If that's not available, you can still get a good position for your base station, and that simplest approach is to let the MLED use an average position. Once you're done with that, you can go to RTK settings, make sure this is in static, and check these three for the best performance. To get RTK to your base station, you need an untrip caster. So we're using the cell phone network to deliver those RTCM correction data to your CRG. So to get that untrip caster, you get that that's included when you purchase an MLED Reach. And to get that Entrip caster, you just need to sign up. It's for free on their website, which is mlet.com forward slash Entrip dash caster. Once you're all signed up there, you go to base mode here on the side of this other website that we were just on before and put in your information right here. Select Entrip and turn the service on. For working with the CRG, you're going to have to enable these six RTCM3 messages and all on one hertz. Then when we look at our base coordinates, you can select manual and just make sure that your latitude, longitude, and those height settings are entered correctly. These are your base coordinates. These three values, make a note of it, a picture, put it somewhere safe, just in case you need it because these values should never change. A quick little test you can do to verify that everything is working, you can go back to this website here, caster.mlet.com, log in, and you should be able to see that your base station is online and see that the access data required for your CRG and trip configuration. So once you want to start setting it up in the tractor, you have, um, if you have a screen like this, right, that's the 4640 or the 1800, 2600, 2630 will look like that. But you are just trying to get to the ISABUS. So I'm going to show you how to do that here on the display. All right, so you're on the home page here of your John Deere display. We're going to click the ISABUS VT. And it's like, if it doesn't show up right away, click this little button here. You'll choose which ISABUS implement. We want to go on the CRG. Click that. And then we're going to go on settings. And we're going to go on and trip settings. So before I go there, you'll see the RTCM modem is on microhard. That's here for North America. If you are, if you don't have a modem, uh, you can still connect via Bluetooth through your phone. So that's an option there. But I do have a modem in here, so I'm going to keep it on microhard. So we're just going to go to end trip settings. And this is where you're going to put in all the info and then you can start your Entrip stream and you're good to go. So you're gonna to have to log in here onto casteremlet.com. That's where you're gonna find your amount point, your address, the port number, your username, password, and that's where you're gonna just input all of this. So just for example, the address here, caster.emlet.com. So I would just put that into here. Okay, so I input the address here. I can also import the port. So for mine here, it's 2101. You can also check your auto connect box if you always wanted to connect every time you start the tractor. So I would do that and then once this is all filled out, 
you press start and then you'll be on RTK 